Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is drill recognition. So the drill recognition operation is uh, one of a few operations inside of SOLIDCAM where we will recognize features in terms of geometries uh, for the use in the operation. Uh, and a lot of these will be solid based. So let's take a look at the first one in this series, the drill recognition. To get to the drill recognition operation, you can either go to SOLIDCAM operations, recognition, and then there's drill recognition there, or you can go to SOLIDCAM AFRM, and there's drill recognition over there. Uh, so basically the drill recognition is differentiated from the drilling operation in that the geometry that you select has certain functionality in there to analyze a solid for those drilled holes. Whereas in the drill operation that we saw, Earlier in this introductory series, you are choosing the uh, the you're manually choosing the the points either by a face selection or point selection. So review the basic drilling operation. Or refer to the introductory video in this series. For drill recognition, I'm actually just going to go and do it the old way. Right click, add milling operation, and then we'll go to drill recognition. So the workflow of this operation is again very similar to all the other operations inside SolidCam. We're going to start with the geometry. And when we click New Geometry, we're actually looking for some drilled features, but we can actually do it using some filters over here. So to differentiate what these filters do, let's just do find holes of the whole thing. You can see it recognized all my holes. And it found the drill points at the center of each one. Uh, so that is including the countersinks and the counterbores. That's actually just looking at the original hole. So one other thing that differentiates drill recognition from the drilling operation is that it's actually looking at the final drilled hole. So these countersinks and these counterbores are not actually what it's looking at. It's looking at the final hole there. So when I do things like hole diameter, I'm actually looking at the internal diameter. So for instance, let's take a look at from this small diameter here to a larger diameter over here. So from to. Now, if I do an analysis of the part, we'll see that it ignored those small diameter holes, but also included those other ones. And that's because the actual hole on the inside falls in between there. So it actually is kind of like a hole diameter selection on, on the face of the part or on the solid of the part as well, if you really look at it. Let's get out of here. Let's go back in. Hole type. I actually kind of skipped over this, but it's uh, pretty essential. If you wanted to make sure you only did, let's say, the through holes, I could just check the box that says through hole, find holes, and on my part, I actually don't have any through holes. So that's why nothing was selected. So I'll put that guy back on. Next up is upper level. So if I were drilling multiple holes on my part and they were all at different levels, I could actually differentiate it by the different upper levels where they start. Now on this part, they're all in the same plane, so this is not gonna be useful for me here. But you can imagine that if you had a part with multiple holes and I'm really not looking to start anywhere uh, upper or lower from a particular point, I could actually use this filter here to find that out. Now what also could be useful is not only <clears throat> the upper level, but maybe, the lower level, or in this case, the height. So let's say I'm only looking to go from zero to maybe one inch down. I'll find holes, and you can see that it ignored all the holes that go deeper than one inch. So that's one way to do it. Now I'll just keep jumping back and forth because we're trying to use filters here. So I wanna make sure that I have all the filters off so I can select only what is applied by that filter. Next is color. Now this one can be very useful because as you see on my part, maybe these holes in particular are the ones that need to be focused on here. Maybe these are um, the specific holes in a casting or these require different tolerances for whatever reason. So I'm looking to just do those holes and in the design file, I've actually colored them so I can focus on them and click on them in one click. Uh, and that's using this filter here. So if I say define, I can actually define the color that I'm looking for from the color wheel here or the color grid. Um, and that's one way to do it if you know the color of your, of your part. But if I don't know, really know what color that is, I can just say pick from model and then just grab an example of it over here. So now I've defined it as being that particular red. So when I do find holes, it only finds the holes of that color, the one over here and the one over there. Let's click on new geometry again. 
And lastly is the 2D boundary. So for the same reason, I might actually put a sketch around these holes and say only the holes in this area are the ones I'm looking to actually drill. So I can click on Add. And I can use the same chain functionality we've seen in the pocketing and the profile operation. So a review of this window here and how to use the chain selection functionality, I refer you to the pocket operation video in this introductory series. I'm just going to turn on my constant Z, grab that edge there. That is defined the boundary that I'd like to uh, do my analysis to find my holes. And I will just do a find holes. And as you can see, it only found the holes in that one area. So let's say we go from there. Under tool, we click select, and it takes you to your toolkit. So I can grab any drilling tool I want from this list here. You can see that it actually shows all the different drill type of tools I might want to use in my drilling operations. For a review on how to create drilling tools or milling tools, I refer you to the Create Milling Tools video in this introductory series. I'm just going to grab this particular drill here, click the green check mark. Under levels, since we could be doing many different holes, many different locations, really the levels, you're controlling the clearance level, and then you can go to depth edit, and you'll actually break down the depth of each hole individually. So if I go to the group here, I can see the individual holes. So if I click on, let's say, hole one, and let's look at that in a skeleton view. If I go to hole one, it recognizes that it starts from the upper level, it goes down a certain depth, and there's no delta depth applied, and I'm doing it to the cutter tip. So very similar controls to what we've seen in the basic drilling operation in terms of upper level, depth, and then the depth type. But I can do that for the individual holes. So for instance, here, I'm not actually looking to go down to that particular depth. Let's say we just go down one inch for hole one. And then hole two, let's leave that as is. And then hole three, let's say we get that down to only a half inch. So actually, I would have clicked on Apply. So we'll leave that as is. And then under Technology, uh, basically this is the drill cycle selection. This is the sorting of the drilled holes. Again, very similar to what we saw in the drilling operation video where we tell it either to sort them in the default direction, in this case, however they were originally selected in the geometry selection, shortest distance between the holes, or I can follow a particular pattern as selected from this window here. On the right side is the drill cycle type. So according to my post, I have the option of choosing any one of these drill cycle types. If I choose a cycle type that requires additional information, say J83, uh, then I can go to data and plug in that information related to that particular post. Now, if I do a save and calculate, let's take a look at my tool path. You can see I did a half inch, a one inch, and then there's the full depth of the 3.5 inches. So I have individual control over the depths in one operation. So the drill recognition is a, a toolpath best used when you have one tool being used for multiple holes, but each hole has a different set of parameters, upper level, lower level, depth type. If you're doing countersinking, you can actually countersink individual holes to different depths. Lots of different functionality here. Um, if you're doing a uh, certain size of hole. Also, the filtering ability here as well helps you to really dial in which hole you want to do with what. So it's really useful for templates as well. Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this introductory series. Thanks for watching.